Family and consumer science. Mr. Greenland's podcast. Let's learn facts. Get on the floor, back straight, never file, to your plate, chew with your mouth closed, chew with your mouth closed, get your elbows off the table, this ain't a horse table. Wow. Hello, everybody. This is Mr. G, and welcome to Family and Consumer Science class you are now taking. This is the introduction video. Uh, my name is Mr. G, and welcome to Family and Consumer Science. Now, you're probably saying, Family and Consumer Science, I thought I uh, signed up for a cooking class. You did, but Family and Consumer Science is what used to be known as Home Ec. Now it is modernized, it is family and consumer science, and the spider webs that come down from family and consumer science. And one of the big ones is, here's say family and consumer science, one of the spider webs that would come down and have a little circle would be cooking. One of them would be self-care and home care. One of them would be purchasing of foods, food safety, food handling, one of them would be sanitation, dishes, how to keep yourself together in the real world. But we're going to be focusing on in this class uh, a lot of cooking, a lot of food handling, and some food purchasing. And hopefully, by semester's end, you got some stuff in your life uh, toolbox, if you would, like um, how to cook, how to take care of yourself, uh, how to boil some water, how to make decisions, how to think on your feet. All stuff we're going to have during class. So, I uh, hope that was good and energetic for you. Uh, this is the introduction video. Again, my name is Mr. G. So, what I want you to do now is get yourself a piece of paper. All right? Get yourself a piece of paper. We'll do a little fun little uh, activity here with Mr. G. This video is going to be about 10 minutes long. But this is the first thing you're going to see uh, probably day one or day two with me. Uh, and I'm probably sitting there all embarrassed of looking at myself on the screen as well. But here we go. What I want you to put on that piece of paper. And this will see if you guys uh, help follow directions a little. Uh, get warmed up in the world of school, in the world of uh, family and consumer science. So what I want you to do is put on the upper left-hand corner. Put your first name clearly now. I know in this modern society, writing is kind of a losing its uh, strength, but I'm a big believer in handwriting. And I'm also a big believer in using uh, keyboards or voice activation software. But right now we're going to put that piece of paper in front of you and you're going to put down on the upper left-hand corner your first name. Right next to your first name, put your last name. Right in the middle, put the period you're taking the class. Write P and then whatever class you happen to be taking this with. All right, and the date. And then number that one through 10. All right, and here we go. Here we go, here we go. It's family consumer science time. Get your elbows off the table. This ain't no horse's stable, but a respectable dining room table. Feet on the floor, back straight. Never bow over your plate. Chew with your mouth closed. Chew with your mouth closed. Here we go. Number one. Number one. What room are you in right now? Do, do, do. Okay. Number two. Number two. Why do you think it is important to learn cooking skills and food storage skills uh, at an er, at a high, at, at your age, why do you think that's important? What's that going to benefit from you? Number three, what is your favorite food? What is your favorite food? What do you really like? Yeah, I'm hungry. I'm going to get something. Um, I'm hoping it's something healthy. Uh, but let's put that as number four then. What is your favorite food that is healthy? Carrot sticks dipped in a nice little... Dressing, broccoli and cheese. Uh, what's healthy? What do you like that's healthy? What do you go to when you're, when you're hungry? Uh, instead of that uh, n uh, next question, what is your favorite junk food? Next question, what is your favorite junk food? And boy, junk food is just what it says. It's junk. I am on right now a no junk food extravaganza part of my life. I'm trying to lose weight. I'm trying to eat better. It's always a struggle. 
All right, I love those funny bones, okay? But I know those funny bones have a lot of sugar, a lot of processed foods, terrible for you. But that's mine. What's your favorite junk food? All right. The next question. What foods is prevalent in your house that has to do with maybe your culture? Let's say maybe you have somebody, some relatives that maybe come from Germany or Scandinavia or Italy. Do you see anything in your house maybe brought over to your grandmother or your mother or your father or your sister or your brother makes or your uncle or your cousin makes uh, that really kind of uh, uh, has entered your life? because your family's background or culture, okay? Next question, what food best describes you? This is a tough one, this is an out of the box question. But the answer to mine used to be, I am like a pizza, I'm round and tasty, but I'm going away from that now because I think I've lost a little bit of my gut. So right now, Mr. G, G feels like food represents me now, a, uh, a nice lean hamburger with lettuce and tomatoes on a nice wheat bun. Okay, that kind of describes me now. Think a little healthier. Are you like an asparagus? Are you nice and tall, crisp, firm, full of nutrients? All right, do you think you're more like a piece of toast? A little crispy, a little golden brown, but a delicious thing. What describes you? Are you like a, are you like a carrot? Are you like a, oh, so just kind of, that's a hard one. All right, all right. Next question. If a rooster lays an egg on the exact tip of a roof, what? <laughs> I just heard a vacuum go off outside. Uh, so that's what that is. That's good family and consumer science, keeping your house clean and vacuuming frequently. It doesn't help when you're doing a TV show though, but if a rooster lays an egg, on the top of a roof, pitched roof, right in the exact center. Which way will it roll? Hmm. Which way will it roll? Okay, next question. Next question. Hmm. I think the introduction is just about done. I don't even know what number I'm up to now. I had so much fun with that. So uh, here's, here's a question for you. What of these three things, four things, have nothing to do with family and consumer science? Food production and cooking, sanitation and food handling, motorcycle repair, or hospitality and job training. Which one of those has nothing to do with, um, with, uh, Family Consumer Science. All right, so we're going to wrap this introduction up. I hope that's 10. If not, if it isn't 10, write me something in the bottom of why you wanted to take this class besides a grade. Please understand there will be tests. There will be quizzes. There will be projects. There will be all that stuff as well as a heck of a lot of cooking. So hopefully you're all locked into that. If you think this might be a little bit too much for you, I think you're going to enjoy the class. I'm not saying drop it, but if you think you, this is going to be too much for you, please drop it now. Take it at another time. But I'm telling you, there will not be a lot, too much outside work to do, but there is considerable amounts of academic work along with lab work. All right, so that's the introduction. Welcome to Family and Consumer Science. It's probably either going to be culinary skills and procedures class you're taking or creative foods that you're taking. Please realize we're in a professional environment. I, the expectations are good behavior. This is an elective class. I'm super happy you took it, but I expect professional courtesy demeanor please and thank yous. A happy, super educational environment is very, very conducive to education and learning. This is Mr. G. Welcome to your class. Welcome to a fabulous semester. I'm sure I forgot a few things, but very good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we will continue on now with, uh, hand those papers in or leave them there in front of you and we'll talk a little bit about them. All right, look at the live Mr. G now, standing up there smiling, and uh, 
Hopefully you liked uh, like what you saw. And here we go. Thank you very much. And let the semester begin. Family and Consumer Science. Mr. Greenland's Podcast. Let's learn facts. Get on the floor, back straight. Never file, chew your plate. Chew with your mouth closed, chew with your mouth closed. Get your elbows off the table, this ain't a horse table. Consumer Science. Mr. Greenland's Podcast. Let's learn facts. Feet on the floor, back straight. Never file, chew your plate. Chew with your mouth closed, chew with your mouth closed. Get your elbows off the table, this ain't a horse table. Hey everybody, this is Mr. G. Tonight's Family Consumer Science uh, show is called Numbers and Food Safety never takes a break. So, my name is Mr. G. Welcome to Family and Consumer Science. What I need you to do now, if you are taking my class, is please get a piece of lined paper. Number that paper 1 through 21. And what I'm going to be doing is I will be, um, I will be giving you 21 numbers. Now, on these numbers all relate to family and consumer science and all relate to um, food handling, food safety, cooking temperatures, to name a few, but I don't want to give it all away. So what we're going to do is I'm going to give you all 21. I'll explain a little bit, maybe give you a few hints. And then when you have all 21 down, we'll take a short break using whatever means of or people around you, your electronic device. Uh, whatever you need to use, we'll take a short break, then I'll come back and I will read the answers. And uh, we'll discuss, if you would, and we'll have a great time. Okay, so here we go. We'll give you guys just a couple seconds to get a uh, piece of paper. Right on that left-hand side, first name, last name, period. What period you take in the class and the date, okay? Again, this episode's called uh, Numbers and Food Safety Never Takes a Break. Here we go. Here we are, the numbers. Number one, 109. 109. Number two, okay? 109. Number two, please write these down in order. 165. And I will give you a hint on that. 165 degrees. 212 degrees is the next one. That would be number three. 135 degrees. Mm. 135 degrees. The next one. Um, eight or eight ounces. Next one, 16. 16 capital T. The next one will be 3 T or small t. The next one is 0.5 or 1 half. The next one we have 180 to 211 degrees, followed by 110 degrees. Mm. That's one of my favorite temperatures when we cook. Uh, 32 degrees to 41 degrees. Next, we have 32 degrees to 0 degrees. Next, 2 hours. 2 hours. Mm, that's about... Uh, that's a good uh, short distance of time and a long distance of time, but how does that relate to food and food safety? 128 ounces is our next one, followed by 16 OZ, 16 ounces. Hmm, how does that relate to family consumer science? And then we have 16 tablespoons, hmm, 16 tablespoons. 32 quarts or 32 ounces okay next we have 
one fourth of a cup, followed by one half a cup, followed by one eighth of a cup. And those are all, what are those equal? And then we have 15 to 30 seconds. Well, there's our list of numbers, 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 numbers. Okay? These are basic numbers that we should just know for our food safety, food handling, food preparation, food storage, to name a few. So what we're going to do now, I want you to work with people around you, and I want you to write down how those relate to family and consumer science and cooking. And I will start you out with number one. Number one, 109. Now, the only people that would know that, that obviously is the room number that uh, I have here at the high school. So you would write down 109 equals room number in the high school. Okay? The next one I'll even do with you because I'm having such fun doing these. 165 degrees, you would write after that, that is a safe internal temperature of foods that will kill off most bacteria in poultry and other foods. Okay? That is the internal temperature. Say this is a big meatball, and I put, this is the food thermometer, I put it in the thickest part. If that comes up to 165 degrees, that would be pretty safe that the salmonella has been killed off and it is safe to eat. So we're going to take a break. We're going to play the family and consumer science intro song two times. That's about a, maybe two minutes. We're going to play it two times. Uh, and then we'll come back and we'll see how we did on this. We'll be right back. Family and consumer science. Mr. Greenland's podcast. Let's learn facts. Get on the floor, back straight, step a mile to your plate. Chew with your mouth closed, chew with your mouth closed. Get your elbows off the table, this ain't a horse table. Mr. Greenland's podcast. Let's learn facts. Get on the floor, back straight, step a mile to your plate. Chew with your mouth closed, chew with your mouth closed. Get your elbows off the table, this ain't a horse table. Hello, hello, hello. We're back. Mr. G, Fame and Consumer Science Television. All right, find us on YouTube. Find me live at the high school that I work at. And, of course, I find me on um, uh, YouTube. Yeah, that's where I post these shows and we show them in school. It's a lot of fun. So I hope everybody playing at home, playing, right in playing here right in front of me, if you're in class with me, or maybe doing this at home during a snow day, uh, here we go. Now, these, I will go over each one. If you get it wrong, that's okay. Everyone's going to get 100. Everybody wins here at Family and Consumer Science. I just want you to just get these right answers down on the paper. It would be interesting to see if what we came up with, if you did good on it right away, or if you uh, had to refresh and reboot some of this knowledge for the first time, or just bring it back up to the forefront of your brains. Uh, super important stuff to do. Super important stuff. You got to know food handling. It will save your life in some cases, and more importantly, uh, it will save people around you from, or yourself from getting a foodborne illness. Okay, all right. That seems like a pretty good introduction, so let's get started. We talked, number one was 109. That was the uh, room here at the high school that I work at, so you write 109. The room here at uh, GHS, 165, is the safe internal temperature of uh, for foods to be pretty sure that it is, um, it has been uh, brought up to temperature to kill off some of the bacteria that might be lingering in the foods that we eat. Number three, 212 degrees. All right, good number. That is the number or the degrees where water starts to boil. Hmm, okay. Very good. You got that one? That's a good one to know, 112 degrees. The next one was 135 degrees. That is the temperature where food should be um, placed into or kept at during service. 
So if you go to a buffet, those water-based big tables, say this is a table, underneath it they'll have a water basin underneath it, and then they fit the food into it, the, tr the trays if you would. And that should be, that food should be at 135 degrees holding temperature. So let's say perhaps you are going to have someone over your house and you made them some meatballs or some chicken, and they're not going to be there for maybe uh, two, two to three hours. Um, you want to hold that. Or even, even is, you want to hold that at 135 degrees. That's a big number. Uh, that's a big number. The next we had eight, eight ounces. This is a big one. Mr. G was going to get a tattoo. I think this might be a number that he put on there. Number eight, that is how many ounces are in a cup? How many ounces are in a cup? Eight. Know it. Like it. Next one, we have 16. 16. 16 ounces are in a pound. Congratulations if you got that one right. Good job. Next one, we have three teaspoons small tea three teaspoons equal wait for it boom, boom. one tablespoon one tablespoon okay now a tablespoon is the next one we're going to talk about that's 0.5 or one half one half of an ounce equals one fluid ounce is a tablespoon okay i'm sorry i'm sorry a tablespoon is 0.5 or one half fluid ounce. So that's the answer to that. 0.5 or one half fluid ounces equals one tablespoon. And as we knew before that, three teaspoons equal a tablespoon. Good stuff to know if you happen if you don't happen to have some measuring spoons and cups around. You can just use a teaspoon and a tablespoon and you can figure figure everything out right, right from that. The next numbers. A 180 to 211. That is the simmering point of water. We know that 212, water will start bubbling. Okay, at 180 to 211 degrees, that is when the water is almost at the boiling point, simmering. Some, res some recipes will call for simmering water. Some will call for boiling water. So there is a, there is a difference, and those are the numbers that correlate with them 180 to 211 equals the simmering point of water very good very good okay next we have 41 degrees and above okay now your refrigerator should be from 32 to 41 degrees so if you're holding food outside of 41 degrees that is where bacteria starts growing quickly part of the food danger zone or the food safety zone you might hear but anything left out of the fridge will go bad quicker than things held in the fridge so 32 to 41 and above degrees and above is where food will grow rapidly ba i mean bacteria will grow rapidly oh, very good okay let's take a quick breather we'll be right back I gotta take a take a breath. I get all uh, get all happy and uh, excited when I start talking about uh, numbers and culinary and family consumer science. We'll be right back after yet again another listen of the family consumer science song. Welcome back, fabulous people watching the Family and Consumer Science show, Family and Consumer Science Television. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. We got our, all our episodes up there. A lot of knowledge, a lot of fun. Nice way to take a break and kind of regenerate your mind about the numbers that are involved when we're cooking. We left off on 32 to 0 degrees. 32 to 0. Now that is if it matches up with your refrigerator that is where your freezer should be kept 32 degrees to zero degrees that's nice and cold not too cold 
but will freeze everything. As we talked about before, 32 to 0 is, I mean, I'm sorry, 32 to 41 degrees. And we talked a few questions before that. That is your refrigerator. So 32 degrees right below that to 0 is your freezer settings. Mm. Two hours. Two hours. A lot can happen in two hours. It can seem like it goes by quick. It can seem like it goes by forever. Two hours. That is how long most foods can stay out before they start growing some bacteria. Also known as a foodborne illness. Now you'll hear FBI spoken a lot. It's not Federal Bureau of Investigation. It's not all these other um, acronyms I think we're calling them, but FBI and culinary and family consumer science means foodborne illness. That is where in the air there is natural bacteria. So let's say that I have a large piece of cheese. Let's all use our imaginations. This is a large piece of cheese or a thin piece of cheese and it's laying on this table and I would say in this beautiful studio here at Manchester Public Television, I'd say it's probably a cool Hmm, 70 degrees underneath the lights, Brendan, my producer, you think it's about 70 in here? It's a lot cooler in here than it is outside, but uh, it still is in the food danger zone, okay? Food, it's, it's above 41 degrees. So if I left a sandwich, let's say for Brendan, uh, I, made you a sam I made you an imaginary sandwich, Brendan, my producer, and I left it here for two, for, let's say over two hours, and I said, Brendan, come and get this. Brendan, would you eat that sandwich left off for two hours? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So that, that two hours is sort of like the give and take on if something's out for two hours, it's probably starting to grow bacteria. Obviously, apples you can leave out for more, something with a protective skin on it, oranges and what have you, but perishable foods, perishable foods, breads, cheese, eggs, meat, uh, potato salad. I've heard horror stories about uh, it's 90 degree day. There's a picnic. They leave potato salad or macaroni salad out for in the hot sun for three, four hours. Somebody, somebody eats it and it probably has turned or started growing bad. And depending on how your body can fight off bacteria, it will probably be a gastric issue. Uh, so two hours, big number. That's when food starts to grow bacteria in unsafe levels. Next, we have 128 ounces. 128 ounces equals one gallon. One gallon, ladies and gentlemen, you know it, okay? 128, so we can break that down a little bit. So if that's the case, how many ounces are in a cup we know is eight. So how many cups are in a, a pint, okay? So we have 16 ounces equals one pint, or two cups equal one pint, okay? Got to think of that, you got one cup, two of those, one pint, yeah? Pretty close to a, a two cups, okay? So you got to get, that's a good information to know. Next we have 32 ounces so there's two pints in a quart so 32 ounces would be one quart or two pints or 32 ounces Woo! okay so one fourth of a cup would be how many tablespoons so okay so we got one fourth of a cup that is two ounces. We have one tablespoon equals a half an ounce, half a liquid ounce. So if we have a half a liquid ounce, how many of those would we have to get to get four, uh, what would be four tablespoons? So two tablespoons is an ounce. So to get to that one fourth of an ounce, that would be Half tablespoon, I mean one tablespoon, two tablespoons, one ounce, another tablespoon, <laughs> another tablespoon, an ounce, one and one equals two ounces. There's two ounces in a fourth of a cup. Whew. 
okay? It's good stuff to know because when you're cooking a lot, you may not have your handy dandy uh, liquid measuring cup with you or your handy dandy uh, dry measuring cups and spoons. But if you have a teaspoon and a tablespoon, and just know the f those quick facts that a tablespoon is a half a fluid ounce and there's three teaspoons and a tablespoon, you too can cook just about anywhere as long as you're following the proper procedures and measurements. Enough said. So, one half of a cup is how many tablespoons? Brendan, you seem like a knowledgeable guy. Oh boy. So we know that one fourth of a cup is four tablespoons. So one half of a cup is how many tablespoons? Eight. You are correct. Again, knowledgeable, knows his culinary, great man. Uh, so there you go. That's the answer to that one. Next one we have. We're almost done. One eighth of a cup is one ounce. How many tablespoons is that? How many tablespoons is one ounce? I just said it. Hmm? Two tablespoons equal one ounce. And last but not least, 15 to 30 seconds. That is the amount of time that you should wash your hands. Washing hands is a big part of food safety. You need to wash your hands. You need to wash your wrist. You need to put gloves on. You need to put a hairnet up. You need to know what you're doing safety-wise. Fantastic. Fantastic. Brendan, how are we doing on time, my good man? Six minutes left. Six minutes left. I think I am going to bid you adieu. Uh, great time. I hope you enjoyed it. Hello to my students. Now take that paper. Okay, make sure everything is correct. Take a deep breath. All right. Hand those papers in to me, the sub, or uh, your friends. But no, get it up there. We'll get your grade for that. I hope you learned something today on Family Consumer Science Television. I'm Mr. G. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to my students, my family, and of course, all the super creative people here that do shows at Manchester Public Television. Keep up the good work. Everyone keep up the good work. Have mindful thoughts. Have mindful thoughts as far as understand that you are having thoughts. Sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're bad. To so just enjoy every minute that we're here. All right. That's not worth. It's not worth spiraling out of control about something that you have no control over. All you have control over is your thoughts. Easier said than done. Hope you had a good time today. This is Mr. G. We'll see you next time.